Welcome to Eagle Ayupna Global Outreach. Today we have a guest and his name is Organetica Samuel Emmanuel. He is the 14 year old boy in 2013 that had an encounter of heaven and hell and he is here with us to share with us his experience and I believe that by God's grace by his testimony we are going to be blessed by the grace of God well before we continue I want us to pray our father and our God we ask that you bless this our discussion yes, reach out to souls yes, as many that are far away from you Lord we pray that you will draw them to yourself Amen. in Jesus name we pray Amen, Amen. Okay, so um Samuel Emmanuel. Yes. Uh, we are happy to have you on Ego Eye Opener and um, we we've seen your testimonies. Uh you are, you are grown up now and see your your videos. Yeah. Uh, you were just a, a young boy. Yeah and uh, today you are becoming a man uh, yeah. uh, you are a young man now yeah. and um, you've had some experiences yeah. and uh, we're happy to have you on Eagle Eye Opener it is a prayer that God will uh, bless this our discussion today so mm -hmm. quickly um, can we please just know you a little this well uh, uh, introduction of yourself okay uh, by the grace of God, uh, I'm, a, I'm now a pastor. I did my ordination uh, last year, October, by, uh, by God's special grace. And it has been a good time working in God's vineyard. But by God's grace, I'm an guy, Samuel Emmanuel. I'm from uh, Delta State, Nigeria, from Sapele precisely. Because Grace, so it's my pleasure to be your guest on this great occasion at the Eagles Eye Opener a Global Outreach. I say God who has brought us together for this vital discussion has a purpose for it and it's, the purpose must be accomplished in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you. Yeah. How old are you now and what do you do now? Uh, by the special grace of God, I'm 21 years old now, and uh, I'm also a student, uh, student of uh, Data State Polytechnic, Ozoro, Nigeria. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So, uh, since that 2013, yeah. um, how many states have you been to in Nigeria and maybe outside to share the word of God, your testimony? Uh, by the special grace of God, I've been to several uh, states in Nigeria, but I've not been across uh, Nigeria to other uh, countries of the world to minister. Okay. Yeah. And um, how many encounters have you had so far meeting the Lord Jesus Christ or uh, your visit to heaven and to hell? Uh, by the special grace of God, I've had uh, four encounters now. There yeah, are four visits from the Lord Jesus Christ. The first one, 2013. I, uh, I had uh, two encounters that year. Uh, sorry, three encounters that year. Uh, 21 days after the first visitation, the Lord gave me the second visitation. Then uh, December 24th to 26th, that same year, uh, the Lord gave me the third visitation, and uh, the third, uh, the fourth visitation occurred uh, last year, August second. Okay, so you've had four different encounters now. Yes. Yeah. Okay, your first encounter, mm -hmm. you talked about. Uh, I know you wrote the book. What's yeah. the title of the book again? Uh, Divine Revelation of Heaven and Hell and End Time Exposition. Okay, and uh, you talk about the three demons or three evil spirits yeah. that are in operation in the world now. Yeah. Uh, could you please just tell us what these spirits are? Uh, 
But God's grace, these three major spirits that are in operation in the same time, one of them is the spirit of lust, the other one the spirit of worldliness, and then the spirit of sin. The spirit of sin. Yes. These three spirits, they are the core spirits in operation in this end time. So everything and every event happening in this world today, they all boil down to these three spirits. You see the things happening in the world, the way people go after the things of this world, and how the 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 yearn, the yearning, the love, the the desires they have towards the things of this world. It points down to the operations and the activities of these spirits and the major one of them is the spirit of lust because lust is a spirit that attracts the people to the things of this world. A practical example, if you look into the book of uh, Genesis, let's just glance through the book of Genesis, about Genesis chapter 3, about the fall of man. And I'll read from verse 6 here. It says that when the woman saw the tree, that it was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Now if you look at this passage, the Bible says here that when Eve saw the tree, that it was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, at this stage, uh, when the Lord Jesus Christ visited me, he was making me to understand that the spirit of lust was the one in operation here that actually attracted Eve to the uh, tree. And she saw that the fruit of the tree was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired. And which that is contrary and goes against God's commandment. He told them that they should not touch the fruit, neither eat for me that or that. If they do, they will die. But here comes now Eve, desiring what God has said, thou shalt not touch or even eat of. So you see that lust there is in operation. And because the desire has already been there, the resistance was no longer there. She had to give in to the spirit of lust. And she ate from it. And not only her, she also gave to her husband, the man, and the both of them did eat, which was actually a direct rebellion and disobedience to the commandment of God. Okay, we'll, we'll kind of come back to yeah. this uh, later. Okay. But uh, I want to ask you, yeah. um, you said the Lord Jesus Christ was crying yeah. and that he was very disappointed at um, many pastors today yeah. and many ministries. Yeah. Uh, could you just please tell us how uh, painful he, he, how deep his pains were, and um, uh, how f disappointed Jesus actually feels? Uh, you know, what you're talking about disappointed. Yeah, disappointment. There's a kind of disappointment that is heartbroken. That is. Uh, what you actually expected uh, from somebody and the person was not able to meet up to that expectation, it becomes heartbroken. Despite all the, 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 the resources, the energies, the strength you have invested in that individual or that particular thing and yet the result is not encouraging, it becomes heartbroken. Uh, when Jesus was talking about his ministers he was crying seriously as if as if he was being crucified again he was being crucified he was crying and when he's crying for his ministers warning them the crown of thorns was on his head and with fresh blood coming out he was crying tears was coming out of his eyes his hands were bleeding his sides were bleeding and his feet were bleeding so he was saying that this is how his ministers and his children, this is how they crucify him the second time with their unlawful deeds, their sinful way of life, and so on. So it's really painful to him. He, if, in fact, he cries more than a baby, if at all anybody can cry more than a little child. He just cried more than a baby because of the love he had 
for his children and most especially the minister because they are his servants they are his hope because he is not here physically with us anymore so he depends on his ministers who through the holy spirit will lead people and uh, show them the way to the father and that way is him jesus christ because he said that he is the only way to the father and that no one can come to the father except by him so he's expecting his ministers to bring the people teaching the sheep of christ the ways of god and making them understand that the only way they can get to heaven the only way they can get to god is through Jesus, but they have faith in that duty.